Hey, welcome back. This is Brian Larson from Beyond the Test. Um, I want to go over some last minute test strategies for the math section before you take the test that's upcoming. Um, so let's take a look at what you should do when you get stuck on a question. So if you get stuck on a question, there's a few math things that you want to take a look at. So the first thing you should do is ask yourself, can you use your answer choices to help you solve a question? So this is what we talked about called that back solving method. So let's take a look at an example of how we could do this. So question 10 here says, by 7 o'clock p.m., one-third of the junior class had arrived at a school dance. By 8 o'clock p.m., 30 more juniors had arrived, raising the attendance to half of the junior class. How many people are in the junior class? All right, well, if you get to this question and you do get stuck and you're not sure how to approach it, let's do what we said first here. Can you use your answer choices to help you out? In this case, it says how many people are in the junior class? Let's start by looking at choice C. Say there is 120 people in the junior class. And now let's go back through the problem. By 7 o'clock, one-third of the junior class had arrived. So in this case, one-third of 120 would be simply 40 students. Now we continue on here. Then it says, okay, by 8 o'clock p.m., 30 more juniors had arrived. So if we add 30 more students, that's going to give us a total of 70 students. And it says, well, after that, half the junior class had arrived. In this case, is 70 half of 120? No. So it cannot be answer choice C. So let's try a different one here. Let's go back and let's start with D now. Say there was 180 students. Now it says one third of the junior class had arrived. So one third of 180. So a third of 180 would simply be 60. So that gives us the 60 students here. And then by 8 o'clock p.m., 30 more juniors had arrived. So we add 30 more. And we'd get a total then of 90 students. So is that half of the junior class? Well, is 90 half of 180? In this case, it is. So we know 180 would be the correct answer here. So that's the back solving method. So don't be afraid to use your answer choices to help you answer questions on the test. After all, for the multiple choice part, they give them to you. So you might as well use them. All right, uh, the second strategy to keep in mind here, if you get stuck, is can you substitute in values for unknown parts of the questions? Um, this strategy you're going to use a lot when you have variables uh, to help you out here. So let's take a look here. Number three says, on the number line above, the tick marks are equally spaced. What is the value of W minus P? Okay, in this case, we're going to, if you didn't know what to do, we'd substitute in values for P and W that make the number line here true. And if you have an equation, make sure it makes the equation true. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four lines here. So each one represents a fourth or 0.25. So P it would be 0.25 and W would be 0.5 or 0.50. So now what's the value of W minus P? Well, 0 0.50 minus 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is going to equal 0.25, which we know as a fraction is 25 over 100, or it's also a quarter, a fourth. So the answer here would be E. Okay, so anytime you have variables and you're stuck, look to use this substitution method third thing you want to look at is can you graph it? So some of these equations will provide you with an equation and uh, the answer can simply be found just by dra graphing the equation here. So let's take a look at one of those examples. So here's a question from the SAT. It says the quadratic function g is given by this function g of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and c are negative constants. Which of the following could be the graph of g? Okay, well we're going to com actually combine two of these strategies here. We're going to combine the substitution method and this idea of graphing. Because as you know, you can't just graph ax squared plus bx plus c in your calculator. So what we want to do here is we're going to do what it says. It says a and c are negative constants. So we're going to choose values for a and c that are negative. And another thing I should have mentioned on the last slide is, remember, you don't want to choose 0, 1, or negative 1 when you're using the substitution method because they have some weird properties. So why don't we say A is negative 2, and let's let C be negative 3. Now B, it doesn't say anything about B. So 
let's just assume that b is some other number. Why don't we just say 1 in this case? Um, again, I said don't choose 1, so actually why don't we do 2 here? Okay, and let's take a look at what the graph would look like. So if we were to substitute in the abc here, back into our equation, this would be negative 2x squared uh, plus 2x, and then it would be a minus 3. So that's what our equation looks like. So let's take a look at that graph. So we turn on our calculator here, and let's go to y equals, clear out anything you already have in there. So we're graphing here negative 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. And let's take a look at the graph here and see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's flipped upside down. So that leaves us with it has to be either a, b, or c. We know it can't be d or e. OK, and as you can see, which one does it look most like? Well, this entire thing is underneath the x-axis. The only one that's entirely underneath the x-axis is choice A here. So A would be the correct answer. All right, the fourth uh, strategy you want to take a look at here is can you draw a picture? So if the question mentions a shape or a polygon, um, sometimes you just have to draw it out and you see what happens. So let's take a look at an example here. It says the length of a and width of a rectangle have integer values. If the area of the rectangle is 75, what is one possible value for the perimeter? Okay, well in this case, I'm going to go ahead and draw my shape here. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to label in whatever I can. It says the area is 75. And we know this is our width. This is our length. And I know that area is equal to length times width. So if my area is 75, I want to come up with possible values that multiply together to get 75 if they're both integers. So we could simply do, okay, well, 75 is equal to 25 times 3. I think that's the easiest one. So the length here we're saying is 25 and the width is 3. So let's go ahead and fill this in. Length is 25, length is 25, and the width is 3 and 3. Okay, so in this case, we're asked what's the perimeter. Now we just need to add up. 25 plus 25 is 50, 50 plus 3 is 53, plus another 3 is 56. So a possible perimeter would be 56. All right, lastly here, the main, last main strategy I should say is, if there is a diagram, did you fill in all the possible information? So let's take a look at one of those examples. So question 11 here says, in the figure above, A, E, and B, G intersect at C. If X equals 80 and C, F bisects angle E, C, G, what is the value of Y? Okay, so if I was stuck here, I would just start labeling whatever I could, even if I had no idea why I was doing it. So in this case, let's label what they gave us here, which is that x is 80. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in as 80. And I'm just going to start marking off anything else in my diagram. Well, I know from here to here is 80. And these two angles are supplementary. So this angle here would be 100. And then I also know, okay, well, if that's... Uh, 80 here, then we know this entire angle here is 80, okay, and if that's 100, then this angle right here would have to be 100. All right, now also note that it says the figure is not drawn to scale. All right, well in this case we know that CF bisects ECG, which means it divides the angle in half. So if this entire angle is 80, it's dividing that angle in half. So it's dividing it into 40, and this part here would be 40. So in this case, what's the value of y? Well, y is simply just going to be 40. All right, so those are the five main strategies you want to do if you get stuck. Um, there's also some good things to remember. So one of the things is to remember that f of x is the same thing as y. So whatever's inside your parentheses there is your x value. And whatever is outside here is going to be the y value. So 
if a question tells you f of 2 equals 6, that means that x is 2 when y is 6. Okay, this is really important, uh, especially if they give you an equation like f of x equals, let's just say, uh, 2x plus 3. And it says, if f of 2b equals, let's see here, um, 15, what is b? So, what is b? Okay, well in this case we have to remember f of x is y. So f of x is y. So what we're saying here is the y value is 15 and x is 2b. So when you go back here, you can kind of think of this function as y equals 2x plus 3. And now all you need to do is substitute in these values here. So we said y is 15. So we make the y 15, and then we switch our x, so that x becomes 2b. So 2b plus 3, and now we can solve this like a normal problem. So let's continue through this here. So 15 equals, now uh, 2 times 2b would be 4b. Okay, sorry, just having a little trouble here. So this would be 4b plus 3, and then you finish this off by subtracting 3 from both sides, subtract 3, so we get 12 is equal to 4b, and lastly divide by 4, so 12 divided by 4, we get b would equal 3, and that would be the answer here. Okay, so inside is x, outside is y. And the other thing to remember here is that the word is means equal, and the word of means multiply. So a question could read, if 3 fourths of x is 16, what's the value of x? So all we need to do is we just need to translate that. 3 fourths of x means we're doing 3 fourths times x. So times x. Is 16 means equals 16. And then you can just go ahead and solve this like any other problem. So you multiply both sides here by 4. So we reduce the 4's down to 1 on this side, so we're left with a 3x equals 16 times 4 is going to give us 64. And lastly here, then we would just divide by 3. Divide by 3, so 64 divided by 3 uh, doesn't go in evenly. So this goes in twice, which is 6, so we minus a 0 bring down the 4, this goes in once, so we have 3, which leaves us with 1, so 21 remainder 1, which is 21 and 1 third, which on the test you could simply write as oops, 21 and 1 third, which would equal 21.3, repeating, but on the test you would just have to put 21.3. Alright, so Hopefully that helps here. Um, any other questions, feel free to uh, shoot me an email right before the test, but hopefully these will help out. And, of course, best of luck tomorrow, and uh, hope everything goes well.